everybody this is Ross in today's video I thought I would do an in-depth analysis really talking about just ways that you guys can get the highest production off of your fig trees um, so if you want the most amount of figs possible this is the video for you and a lot of the information I want to preface all this by saying that a lot of this information is not something that I would normally recommend and it's not something that I normally do and the reason for that is that I have different objectives that you guys may have so in the start of your season even for particular trees you may say alright well this tree is quite young I want it by the end of the season to have the right form I want it to grow I want it to get to the right size um, others may have trees that they say oh I want as much production from this tree maybe you have a tree that you want to focus on getting the highest fruit quality that's normally what I do here is that I'm trying all these different varieties I'm trying to achieve the highest fruit quality that's possible here in this climate um, which then of course correlates to the best tasting fruits that I can grow here in this climate and um, unfortunately I'm, I'm really sad to tell you guys this but you can't have both you can't have the highest fruit quality the best tasting fruits and have the uh, the most production that anyone else is getting in the area um, it's just not gonna happen and the reason for that is because when we talk a lot about getting the highest fruit quality possible we actually have a blog here that we did recently um, on our blog figboss.com we did uh, some important characteristics some things that you want to try to do to get the highest fruit quality a lot of this relates to less water a consistent soil moisture but uh, on the drier side excuse me guys um, also having a lot of heat of course sunlight um, and also less food that you would normally um, think to use because the more food that we use the more that we are going to increase the chances of cracking and the more cracking we get the more that our figs are being exposed to the elements we are uh, breaking apart the synconium the outside shell I guess of the fig um, so those are kind of things that we we focus on and that's really sort of the opposite of what we would do to maximize our production now um, everything I'm about to mention to you guys revolves around these new shoots that come out from our trees getting these shoots these this new green growth um, as healthy and vigorous and as strong as possible um, getting this off on the right foot from the very beginning is going to net us the most fruits that we can achieve in one season um, so it's really important to pay attention to this because first off our fruits form on the new growth that's the main crop that's what we're gonna we're talking about in this video you'll always be able to achieve a higher main crop production than Brabus of course they ripen at different times of the year so you may not want to focus on main crop but for the the sake of this video we are talking about main crop and everything that I'm mentioning relates back in some way to increasing the vigor the health and the strength of these new shoots so the first thing that may be very obvious and should be very obvious to everybody is that we need to cover all of our nutrients uh, we need to have a nice base we need to have the right soil from the beginning we should have the right structure from the beginning on our tree um, you know if in terms of nutrients we should just be covering everything we should also be putting them in full sun giving them as much heat as humanly possible so 95 degrees or lower Fahrenheit in the soil temperatures that's what we're looking for anything above 95 is not good we want the soil temperatures ideally to stay around 80 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for the optimal the most optimal metabolism of these trees if we have a higher metabolism we're gonna be able to put this growth out at a very fast rate and that's what we want we want this this growth to come out as quick as possible because at a certain point of the season we're gonna get these branches to set fruit and if we can get as much growth as possible in the beginning of the season 
Um, that's going to pay off, of course, later in the season when we are uh, getting our fruits to form. So in terms of fertilizer, real quick, um, some things that I'm using right now is a 945-15. I personally don't rec really recommend that. That's the, the NPK ratio. And, um, you know, it stands for nitrogen, potassium, or phosphorus and potassium. So the N is really the most important number on that those three numbers. They're, these are the macronutrients. The N is really going to dictate how much production you get for the year because that's going to greatly affect the growth for the year. Um, right, the nitrogen is affecting the leaf growth, the shoot growth. Um, the phosphorus is going to affect the root growth, which we do need some of that because our trees need to stay in a hormonal balance. Um, just like us as humans, we have hormones. If we're not in a hormonal balance, we start doing all kinds of weird stuff. So in the plant's case, you know, if uh, there's a hormonal imbalance, we may have a tree that likes to just grow and grow and grow and not fruit. So it's really important. A lot of that is really key when it comes to your pruning. But of course, if you're feeding too much, this can also greatly affect the hormonal, the hormonal balance of the tree. Um, so I would say the, the pruning is number one, but um, you know we also need to pay attention to the amount of nitrogen that we're giving our trees. Again, too much nitrogen is not good in the long run. And in fact, it also affects fruit quality in terms of cracking, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, phosphorus is also important for that root growth. The potassium, it just improves the overall health of the tree. And it, there is a study that was published uh, quite recently. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, this is the study that I was looking at the other day. And this study really talks about potassium in terms of figs and the results that was uh, published. And it's really quite simple that the uh, results show that the potassium fertilizations provided increases of production in dry material of branches and fruits um, where better results were associated with blah, 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 in conditions of low and medium fertility in potassium. So we need to get that high level of potassium in our soils or directly towards the plants. And this is also going to increase the amount of leaves and therefore the production. Um, because our tree is just overall healthier, it's able to just grow in a much easier state in a, in a better state to then put out as much growth as possible to get as much fruit as possible. So overall, I would recommend a higher nitrogen, a high uh, potassium, and a lower number in the phosphorus. However, we still need it if it's not present in your soil. Um, so those are the, the NPK ratios that I'd recommend. You know, the, the, the micronutrients are also a little important. And I would just recommend some, cal some calcium, some magnesium, that's really all you have to worry about. Cover all your micronutrients and you'll be fine. Um, so a little bit of lime is okay. Make sure you have the right pH in your soil, somewhere around 6.5 to 7.5. Um, now there is a product that I'm gonna be using this year in an effort to in, try to improve my production. Uh, we're gonna talk about two methods of growing figs that I've talked about in the past and how these differ in one fruit quality and then the other method is dealing with production. Um, so I'm gonna try to combine this year sort of the best of both worlds. Try to get the still the same fruit quality that I have been getting, but try to increase my production just a little bit um, and see what happens. I, I may also decide to keep a tree and do the other method of growing figs to try to get as many figs as possible off of that tree in particular. So the products here that I'm going to be using this year to kind of help in that and move towards a higher production is the Dynagrow Protect. This has got the silica, which is really nice. I'm not entirely convinced that's really going to help too much with production. But what it does also have is the a, a level of uh, potassium. And as I said, potassium is really going to help. Um, What's nice about this particular fertilizer is that it's a foliar feed. Um, if we are, for whatever reason, quite low in potassium this year, uh, which is quite unlikely, I would imagine, 
we can then increase our numbers to achieve the numbers here in this study and to achieve the results in this study. So again, because it is a foliar spray, it's getting absorbed into the plant very readily and very quickly. Um, and it's a guarantee uh, for the most part. Whereas the soil really needs some different functions. A lot of it has to come together and be in perfect balance for a lot of these nutrients to be uptaken. And it's just a slower overall process. So getting this, um, this silica supplement here, this potassium supplement, spraying this on my trees a couple times throughout the year, I think is really gonna pay off in dividends. There's, I'm doing this also for another purpose because the silica and the potassium may work together to improve some hardiness on my trees, which I also think is a great benefit, uh, especially where I live. So this is the product for me. I'm not saying get this product. I'm just saying that I'm going to be trying a foliar spray of potassium that is then hopefully going to increase my production without really me having to change much of my growing techniques. So that's a nice little tip there, something you guys may want to look out for. Um, now, onto the frequency of this fertilizer and the amounts of this fertilizer. This can be a bit tricky and obviously depends on the person, depends on the soil. I would read the labels. Um, you'll see here, though, in this particular post that I made on rfigs.com, we talked about this, and I think in one other video that we've done, is that there's two really main ways of growing figs. Because if you think about our objectives, there's one that's mainly for production. There's one that's mainly for fruit quality. Fruit quality is all about getting these fruits to ripen at the peak time of your season when the weather is the most um, optimal to be ripening figs. That means it's the driest, um, also probably the warmest, and those two things combined together is going to net you the highest fruit quality. Um, <clears throat> So for me, that's really what I've been doing for a long time is method A, in that our trees break bud. I fertilize my trees right away. That's really key, as we talked about with these new shoots, getting them healthy and vigorous and strong. Getting the fertilizer on immediately is very important. Then I'll thin these new shoots. And we talked about thinning. Uh, we talked about also recently removing brevas. Those things are going to help uh, divert the energy of the tree into the places that we want to then increase the health, vigor, and strength of our particular branches that are going to fruit for us that year. It's quite key. Um, and then uh, we stop our fertilizer quite soon. That's really the difference here between method A and method B uh, because what we're trying to achieve is to get our our shoots as vigorous as possible. Then we start this pinching process, which is removing the apical bud. There, therefore, setting a lot of these fruits along that new growth. We set our fruit, and then after we pinch, we even before that, we discontinue our fertilizer, and we slow down our water. We lower the amount of water, and as a result, a lot of our growth will discontinue until frost. This will get you the highest fruit quality possible because we're getting our fruits earlier in the season. You may want later fruits, believe it or not, depending on where you live. Um, you know, just because of what is the most optimal weather condition during your season, when is that for your particular season? Um, but for me, getting them earlier is going to be key. So method B, the difference here, and this is how we're going to get that early, that better production, the most that you can possibly get is we're gonna get our bud break, but we're gonna fertilize heavier and for a longer period of time. I have friends that are getting quite a lot of fruits off of their trees, and the, the standard rule of thumb per five gallons of soil is that you should get about 75 fruits. Per five gallons of soil, you should have about five fruiting branches for the year. So if you count the number of shoots that come out of these trees, here's one, two, three, four, five, and that would be it if that was five gallons of soil. And then you call it quits, right? On those particular branches, we would have 15 fruits per branch. Five branches, 15 fruits per branch. That nets us 75 fruits per five gallons of soil. And I think that's quite difficult. And it's also uh, a heavy requirement on the fertilizer. 
Um, we really need to have good pruning methods as well, a good form as well. Um, and we need to be very strict in our, our techniques and this regimen that we're gonna have to go through. Again, fertilizing heavier and fertilizing longer. To give you some perspective, you're probably gonna have to fertilize all the way up until July. Um, now, my season starts May 1st, so that means two months of feeding once a week at a minimum. Um, I have friends that are doing this all the way up until uh, August 1st. So they're doing three months of feeding. Um, I think that's just way too much and probably unnecessary. However, uh, to achieve this, you really are gonna wanna fertilize for about eight full applications of fertilizer from the beginning of your season for about two months into your season. So whenever the first date is of that last frost, mine's May 1st, add two months onto that and that's when you're gonna stop your feed. You guys are gonna wanna use the NPK ratios that I recommended. Something probably like a, uh, you know, a 10, four, five, eight. Something like that is probably the most thing, most that I'd recommend. Um, maybe you'd even want to consider a higher potassium ratio uh, than your nitrogen. So you'd maybe want to do an eight, four, five, 10, or 10, four, five, um, eight. So it's up to you. I think that's a pretty good. Uh, NPK ratio right there and then you're um, you're gonna thin out some shoots as well just like we did at the very beginning of our season but you're gonna thin very few shoots because the objective here is that we can also try to focus on getting um, you know maybe even more fruiting branches than what our trees could potentially handle and we may have some shoots, let's say from lower on, a lower point on the tree, like uh, you know the apical dominance, which is the hormone in the in any plant that is suppressing a lot of the lower growth. That hormone's very strong in figs, in that they're very apical dominant. Um, a, they form a crown, and that crown really helps suppress a lot of the lower growth down below, especially in containers. So we have a, a shoot right here that you guys can probably make out. And then this lower shoot right here that's forming is pretty slow to get going. And this particular shoot would really not do well in method A. And I would probably thin out that shoot. But in method B, it would probably be recommended to keep this shoot um, to try to get as many figs as possible. The more shoots we have, the higher potential for fruits down the road. Of course, we don't want to have shoots that are creating problems with our form, creating crisscrossing branches, creating branches that are getting shaded out. Um, you know, we still wanna have that good form and a good amount of fruiting branches per the gallons of soil that we're using, right? Five fruiting branches per five gallons of soil, somewhere around that. I personally use a little bit lower. So for a five gallon size pot, I would use like four fruiting branches. For a 10 gallon size pot, I would use eight fruiting branches. Etc. Etc. But if I was feeding more, I'd be more inclined to thin less. And that's actually what I've done this year is that I'm going to be feeding just a little bit more this year to see how that affects my fruit quality and to also see how that affects my production. Um, so I'm going to do instead of a total of eight feedings like you guys would do in, in to maximize your production, I normally do four feedings. This year I'm going to do a total of six. And we're going to see if that is going to, you know, what effect that really has on my trees. That combined with a little bit less aggressive thinning. And we're going to see if I can get the best of both worlds combining both method A and method B while still preserving a lot of method A. We'll see if, uh, if that's possible. So, um, and then of course, once you guys get all these shoots and you've been feeding for so long, they're probably at this point going to naturally form some fruits without the help of pinching, depending on the variety. Um, but other varieties and most of these trees will probably need still the help of pinching. And uh, as a result, you're going to basically stop the fertilizer at that point of the season. You're gonna lower the water at that point of the season. Um, and you're gonna set yourself up for 
all that growth that you put out for eight feedings or two months is going to then fruit for you um, and probably quite quickly. Um, you would be surprised. I have a, there's a friend of mine who's in Michigan who really feeds his trees quite a bit and he's getting fruits a lot earlier than most people would expect. And I think the feeding that he does, so much food is really helping speed up that ripening process, which is quite interesting. Um, but he's probably the heaviest feeder that I've ever seen with figs. So it, uh, maybe you don't want to go that far. I don't know. But uh, is it worth it? I don't know. And it really does depend on your objectives, right? So that's sort of the the recommendations here that I'm making for you guys is to, once again, increase the health, vigor, and strength of these new shoots. Feed them. We maybe want to do some thinning. We're going to do some pinching later on, but we're going to feed for a, a longer extended period of time, a heavier amount. We're going to have the right MPK, MPK ratio. We're going to have them in full sun, cover all of our macro and micronutrients, and give them as much heat as possible. And we're going to set ourselves up for, um, you know, hopefully keeping them in hormonal balance. And we're going to have probably the highest production that you guys have seen. And, um, you know, it's, it's not really a surprise. This isn't something that is like, um, you know, totally mind blowing and it's not something that I normally go for. Um, but everyone has their own little thing, right? Everybody has their own objective. And if that's what you guys want, that's what you guys want. I'm happy to provide you with the information that's available. Um, additionally, if you guys want bigger fruits, then that's what you guys want, you know? Um, so I'm glad that I was able to present this information for everybody get you guys thinking about the different methods that you can employ for this upcoming season and see what happens and get yourself off to um, a very happy fig season. So I want to thank everybody out there for watching. Um, check out our blog here, figboss.com and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to the channel and we will see everybody for tomorrow's video. Take care guys.